G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is a slowed down look at the detail of the dog's ear, of the dog that I drew last week. This is only at two times speed instead of at about 20 times speed that it was at last week, so hopefully it's helpful to you guys. So my process for how I go about something like this is I'm starting here with my brightest pencil, which is the Derwent Drawing Chinese White and just laying in all the really bright areas in the ear. Even the areas that aren't super bright, just some of the brighter areas so I can map out the shapes and form of the ear before I go in with any color and I lose my place with those shapes. So I'm just working in the really bright rims and some of those lighter areas with that white pencil and I'm just erasing the the outlines for my piece before going in with that white pencil because the white pencil doesn't always cover that. Sometimes that that lead pencil uh, shows through. So as I said, just going in and popping those all in and then using a cotton bud to blend them out a bit so that it fills the tooth of the paper a little bit. This paper is Canson Matons pastel paper, the fine grain side, so it is a little bit gritty. So just smoothing that out and blending it out a bit, which does tone down the brightness of the pencil a bit. And then I'm going in with the Derwent Drawing Light Sienna color and adding in a base layer where all of my mid-tones and some of my darker tones are. Because this is a really nice color to go underneath some of those other colors later on. And I can still tell the difference between where I've laid down this light sienna and where I've laid down the white pencil. So I'm just going in pretty lightly with both of those colors, just like I said, mapping out shapes in the ear. So I'm actually going in here now with terracotta from the Polychromos range and mapping out some of those darker areas and where some of the color is on that ear and really getting a better sense of place of all those things and adding in that color over the top of some of my lighter areas just to add some form and to blend those layers together. Just following my reference photo as close as I can, popping in some more whites just to redefine some of those really bright areas because I don't want to lose those bright areas along the way. I want them to always stay really bright, especially the like the really, really bright ones. And once again, blending it all out with a cotton bud just to smooth it out a bit. Get rid of some of that texture. And like I said, it does pick up a little bit of the color, but that's easy enough to just work back over the top again. But I find that blending it out really helps with just toning down the texture of the paper a little bit. So I'm just coming in now with the raw umber polychromos, the raw umber polychromos color, and just working through that ear some more, using fairly light pressure just to go over some of those uh, darker areas of fur, adding in a little bit of fur texture, just adding in some tiny bits of detail and little pops of color here and there and working through that ear there. Like I said before, pay really close attention to your reference photo to work out where that ear fur texture needs to go and work out where those variances in color need to go. Just adding subtle hints here and there because I don't want this ear too dark. It needs to be well lit because it's on the bright side of the dog, even though the color is more rich. So I'm using some terracotta there just to really pop out those colors again, going back in with that, making them a little bit more vibrant. So they look like they're in bright light because I felt I toned them down a little bit too much there. And just adding that color in slowly but surely. Going back in with the light sienna. Now I have sharpened this up and I'm looking to add in some finer detail with this color now, a bit of fur texture with it as well as, as 
um, boosting up some of those brighter areas a little bit more without making them too bright, which is why I'm using this color so that it's not the vivid white. Just so you can see me adding in little fur strokes there, just light pressure, nothing too hard, just to add a little bit of you know hints of texture there because the ears aren't the main focus of the piece. The eyes and the nose really are, so that you don't want the ear to be, well, I didn't want it to be too sharp and too focused. Going with the white, just to add back in those bright areas, the really bright sections, add in the fur detail, really pop the highlights on the edges of the ear, work them out. Again, going in and refining some of those little textures and just working through. And it's a matter of repeating a lot of these steps over and over, just going back over with some different colors. You can see me using the color Nougat there in that area to pop in some nicer dark spots, but not too much because as I said, this is the well lit side. So I don't want too much shadow and too much darkness but it does need a little bit so that it can be better defined. Adding some warm gray. I think that's the warm gray one. And blending some of that out. Just smoothing it out. And then I can add more fur texture in again over the top. But I just wanted to blend those colors together a little bit more just to get a better unified look to that ear. Adding some dark sepia for those really dark shadows around the edge of the ear. Really trying to make that ear stand out from the side of the face. And just some few gentle hints, really light pressure on this dark sepia. You really don't want to go too dark few gentle hints of fur strokes with that pencil. Working through those edges, a little bit here and there. Like I said, not too much. You don't want to overdo it with this. The other ear, I went quite dark on those edges and the little folds, but that ear is in shadow. Now I'm just adding a little bit of a hint. This is the Derwent Drawing Mars Violet. I used a lot of this on the opposite ear, which is in shadow. Um, probably didn't need to add onto this ear because I said it is on the bright side. It's not in shadow, but I wanted to add some in just to sort of unify the colors a little bit with the other ear. I didn't want it to look too separate and alienated. So I just added a tiny hint of that in just to add a bit of depth to the color and to look like it was part of the piece. And I am going in with the Polychromos white now. This is a slightly more translucent white than the Derwent drawing. And I thought it might be good for just adding in some more of those fur details, a few little strands of fur without being too vividly bright. Just add a bit of texture. And also using those fur strands to help indicate the shape and form of the ear because you really need to make sure you're paying attention and following the direction of the fur. Because if you don't follow the direction of the fur, it's not going to look accurate. So pay close attention to that when you're putting in your little fur strokes, make sure you know which direction the fur is going. A little bit more of that dark sepia now that I've added some more whites in just to balance it out a bit. Like I said, it's only the smallest areas and only a few little touches with the pencil, but just enough to give more of an indication of texture and form. Really help bring that ear sort of into a three-dimensional space rather than a two-dimensional space. A little bit more purple. There's really no limit to layers. If you're not happy with how your colors are blending out quite yet, just add some more layers. 
you know, there's I've used layer after layer after layer on this and you could call it done at about halfway, but if you keep on going and layering, it adds more depth and more texture to the overall form and dimension of the ear. So it's really important to keep layering and keep using different colors and going over it and you know, just really defining that form and adding lots of different layers of colors really helps add depth to that color as well. Adding a little bit of pink in there, adds some warmth to that ear rather than just some of the white on the highlights. And some more of that light sienna that I used early on as the base layer. Now, even though, you know, it's important to add lots of layers, you can also overwork a piece as well by adding too many layers and too much to it and not knowing when to stop. So it's a very del a bit of a delicate balance. This is the Payne's Grey. It's a very, very dark grey. It has a little bit of a, a cool tone to it, but I just wanted to make those few little shadows pop around some of that fur texture thinking that the dark sepia hadn't quite done it. After I've worked on a bit more of the piece, I went back to the ear a little bit. Just like I said, refining some more of those shadows again. Deepening them the tiniest little bit. I really wanted to indicate that fur texture quite strongly. And adding some sky blue to add in some of that reflection from the sky over the top. Just a very light glazing of that. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video and that you liked seeing a more in-depth view of how I complete a certain part of a piece. If you would like to see me do this full piece, you please take a look at last week's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next week for another video. Have a Merry Christmas. Stay creative.